Hey guys, uh, Reed here, and uh, welcome to Related to Christ. So today we're going to talk about putting people uh, above yourself. Um, we're going to talk about verses such as Philippians 2-3, 1 John 4, 7-8, Romans 12-10, 1 Timothy 5-8, Matthew 5-41, uh, yeah. And Ecclesiastes 7 through 3. And I'll do some book recommendations. Um, but I really just want to talk about this story at school. So I was in art class. And this girl um, who's in my art class, can't really say her name, because that would be rude, of course. Um, but she's in my art class, and I was just kind of ranting about how I'm, you know, the minority. And, you know she was doing an art project and stuff, and I was like, hello, and I was like, she doesn't even hear me, and then she went over and yelled at me, and then she said stuff like, don't expect me to feel sorry for you, um, you know, please just, you know, that popular people have depression, and she, uh, kind of just ran to me, and she said, I'm not allowed to say that, well, First Amendment says, freedom of speech, so, I think again, um, but, really, she kind of ranted about that, and I thought to myself, well, even before when you weren't doing your art project, or even when you were, you didn't hear me, and the art project wasn't even that important, important, and so, that kind of hurt my feelings, and then, the next time, I, what made a poster for our group, not her, me, I just told her, uh, does it look good or not, and of course she said yes the whole time, because she didn't want to do it, um, but then, um, I gave it to her, and I said, hey, do you want this poster, and then she didn't answer me, and I said, hey, would you like this poster, and she said, hold on, and she said, yeah, whatever, and I thought to myself, really? poster that I made for our group that was 20% of our grade you just say whatever I made it okay guess that's fair enough I'm sorry do people just not think these nowadays <laughs> I mean people are just stupid I guess but the real topic is don't put people below you I was in math class, um, you know, just there sitting around, you know, playing games, and my friend Noah, I was talking to him about, you know, God, Christian living, and spiritual warfare, um, and the big thing, um, that I talked to him about was, I hate that people think they're better than us, you know, they think they're better than me, and they think they're better than God, and they just treat us like a token bunny or something, you know, and we're not that, you know, token bunny or anything, but we're really children and sons and daughters of God, and what makes me mad is that the girl who put me uh, below herself was a Christian. Now, what I'm about to say right now, it doesn't just go to her, it goes to everybody. And this is not supposed to be rude, but if you're not hungry for God, you're probably full of yourself. And it's true. Truth hurts. And I like to say that in my sermon, because I think that our nation is in need of a spiritual awakening. Like, we need it. We need to be awestruck by God's awe. And we have to be. I mean, we really do. But let's not get sidetracked. Um, let me start out with uh, the verses now. Um, oh. Well, the first one is Philippians 2.3. It says, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Now this verse talks about don't put people below you. 
As Christians, we should treat each other equally. That's pretty good. The next one is 1 John 4, 7 through 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. That's really true. I mean, we should love because God loved us, and he put us on, on a cross, that we should have a direct look at the cross. The next verse is Romans 12.10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. That means outdo him so much, go above and beyond. If if he says, oh no, I'll pay for lunch. Say, oh, I'll pay for lunch, drive you home, and pay for dinner the next day. I, that was a little over. But still, outdo him with honor, with love, with affection. We need to go overboard with God's love. We don't need to, you know, in in this nation, in this generation of adults, of millennials and kids and toddlers, you know, anybody. This is just an idiosynchronized, broad, you know, spectrum of people. That we go to the expectation of, oh, it's good enough, and then we stop. And if we go down, we rise there, and then we stop. This is almost like the limit, you know? The, the big phrase from, like, Dr. Seuss and Walt Disney and all these people was, the sky is the limit. Well, apparently it's good enough is the limit now, which is sad. Um, and next one is First Timothy 5.8. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. This is basically saying, if you do not love, you are pitiless. You're nothing, really. And you would might as you would well or might as be called an atheist if you do not love with God's love. If you do not treat people equally to you, without love, you're just nothing. Honestly, I mean that's the next verse. I'll, I'll just summarize First Corinthians. 13 1 through 13 it's basically if you do not love and if you don't not use love you're nothing zil yeah bubkiss nothing zero followed by an infinite number of zeros you are nothing without love especially without god's love i mean that's the law of morality is god's love that's where it originated that's where it came from that's what we believe as Christians, is we follow the laws of morality. Next is Matthew 5.41. And if anyone forces you to go a mile, go with him two miles. That means go above and beyond. I mean, love is a part of unity. And it's a big part. And then, last verse I want to look at is Ecclesiastes 7.3. Now, the last verses that we looked at basically wrapped up. Don't put people below you. Put them above you. Put them as equally with love. And now we see that just look at a movie without love and unity. It's just a cruddy movie. I mean, well, you know, horror films, of course. But it, those are cruddy movies, of course. But I haven't really seen one. And I don't want to. You know, be careful, little eyes, what you see. That's a God-inspired message. So I think we should follow it, don't you think? Yeah. Um, God also says to enjoy yourself, but enjoy yourself without evil, and, you know, putting bad stuff in your brain, of course. Okay. <laughs> and, but, I want to look at Ecclesiastes 7.3, which says, Frustration is better than laughter, because a sad face is good for the heart. This means that... A sad face is good for the heart means that you need to have compassion for others. Now, these were many, many challenges that these verses gave, you know. Uh, treat each other equally. Treat each other with God's love. Create unity. You know, consider Jesus. Believe in God. Confess Jesus' name. Um, and be compassionate, you know. And, you know, etc. And all these have a message, but... 
really what God and this video is trying to get to you is just go to school as a young Christian or go to work as, as an adult or anywhere as true following Christian, not a fan, but a following Christian of God and treat people equally as brothers and sisters. I'm related to Christ and I challenge you to use Philippians 2-3 as a non-mediocre uh, thing for your life. Now here are some book recommendations. This is Art of Personal Witnessing, Witness as a True Christian. This is a book by Max Lucado, Cure for a Common Life. And live your life for God. Don't live a, you know, a token life. And this one, I really like. Also by Max Lucado. It's not about me. Treat others as you would want to be treated. The first and one of the foremost laws of morality. So I challenge you. Put others before yourself. I'm related, Christ.